Welcome here to my corner of the internet. <laughs> um, my name is Anna. Uh, I am a 30-something makeup artist from Manchester. And I just wanted to claim my little corner. Uh, I am in my mid slash late 30s. I have two children. Um, it's been a hard paper round and, you know, the skin is just not, you know. It's not flawless. Um, we have we have we have lines. We have wrinkles. The audacity! So I wanted to do a video just showing how I do my makeup or how I do makeup on clients who are the same age as me. Just how I work on kind of thirty plus skin. So that's what we're gonna do today, uh, and I'm gonna do a glam look. I'm, I'm a full glam kind of girl. Um, I tend to wear black wherever I go, whenever I go out. So I kind of like just letting my makeup do a bit more of the talking. And my hands, as it turns out. So we're going to start with the makeup. We're gonna start with eyes. I'm gonna list in the description the, the products I use. So I'm just gonna start to just pop in a little bit of serum on my face. I try and moisturize every day. <laughs> I wanted to try the e.l.f. putty eye base because I, I just got it the other day and I've just sat down to do this and I can't find it. So we're not going to use that, we're not going to try that. I'm just going to use my usual eye base, um, which turns out to be a mix of about three. Um, and hopefully I'll find it <laughs> for the future. So annoying when that happens. It's showing up really, really light. I can see in the lights. It's not showing up as light in my mirror, um, but that's fine because we'll blend that out. And I am doing quite a kind of strong look. So a lighter base is actually not a bad thing at all. A bit more. So all I'm doing is that I'm blending out the edges. And then I'm just patting all over the lid just so we have no creases so I'm going in with the black and this is black um, I have hooded eyelids as you may see so I've learned this trick I think it was make me up missa uh, who I saw do it first I'm sure the person who, with hooded eyelids will t will show you this trick and it's to keep your eyes wide open as you kind of place your eyeshadow because then you know that it's going to be seen. So I'm just placing this black. I'm not going all the way across. I'm going about halfway to two thirds across whilst keeping my eyes wide open. So I'm just stamping it just to get the shape there and then about halfway to two thirds across. I'm going to this like a brown purpley shade I'm going in with next. And this one I'm taking right through to the inner corner. Same thing on the other side. When you're working this way, uh, and I always tell clients this as well, um, you look insane. <laughs> they, if I'm working on a client, I always ask them to please trust me. I will suggest that they don't look in the mirror because they will often go, ah! It's one of them where we trust the process, it comes together really nicely, but it does look mildly insane as we're doing it. I'm actually going in with a beige rather than, there's a pinky one here as well, but I wanted a bit more brown toned so I'm just going about half on half off I'm just smooching so as I'm putting the lighter shades on you will see that the blend immediately disappears and that's fine don't panic that will happen um what you then do is that you go in and kind of tidy it up so you kind of repeat everything once again I'm now going to spend some time just blending these 
a bit more flawlessly. <laughs> We're back. Uh, it's much better blended now. Um, we've just gone in a couple of times with each shade. Just kind of got them nice and smooched out. I will find things as I go on and I will kind of go in and correct them. That's how I like to work. Uh, this again you can do this in different ways uh, i know some people like to just go in with a wipe uh, some people go in with kind of a balm i just go in with my usual like eye makeup remover um, and then which is fine just make sure everything is kind of patted dry so you don't have that oil left on the eyelid because then you will mess up the next step uh, but i will keep my eye open so i will clean the line just above the crease just so you can still see kind of the details when I have my eye open. So I'll try and do it on camera. So looking in to the mirror, keeping my eye kind of wide open and I just slowly clean that line up. I just go again about two thirds maybe three quarters and I finish in a slight angle at a slight angle so let me just clean this up so that's one eye done looks kind of crazy at the moment I'll finish the other eye and we'll do the next bit. so I'm going to go in with a white um, because I want the next the the, the kind of the, the stuff I'm putting on the lid I want to really pop uh, I'm doing a cut crease so I'll try and do it slightly closer to the camera. I'm just going to basically follow this line with a tiny brush and then I'm going to use a slightly bigger brush just to pat it on the lid. Uh, but I will speed this bit up. insane i know it looks insane but again trust the process bear with me and it will all come together beautifully let me do the other one right we're back we somewhat match any bits that don't match we will fix now as well when we add our shades so just before i add the lid shade i'm just gonna go in with the brush that i use for the black and I'm just brushing from the outside in, right at the ends here, just to smooth this edge here. When I do this, I go from the outside in, because otherwise I would be wiping that white even, even further out, and then we have to work even harder. So the, the lid shades I'm going in with are actually highlighters. Uh, and when I tell you that they are the most beautiful highlighters I have ever seen in my life, uh, obviously this one I can't use as a highlighter, you would need someone with a much kind of deeper skin, skin tone but you can use it as a blush topper or like I do as an, a lid topper, eyeshadow topper and then the light one I can sort of use as a highlighter if I have a little bit of a tan it's just beautiful as a topper, they are like multi cream so the pink one you might see is shifting in blue and purple. The lighter one is kind of shifting in pink and peach and a little bit of green. And they're just incredible. And I really like using them as eye toppers as well. So I'm going to go in with the pink one first, which I'm going to use on the outer kind of half of the white. So this is going on dry with a brush and um, just onto a like tacky eye base. I'm not using any glue. So I'm tapping on just a couple of layers. I've tapped it on and now I can just smooch it a little bit because we have that on as a base. So doing that for on about half of that white section. And then I'll go in with a smaller flat brush and then I'm using that lighter shade and I'm going on 
to the rest of this white section. I'm trying to work quite quick because I know that this the, the base that I have used dries very quickly and it makes it harder to, to work on. So I'm just trying to get it on super quick and then we can go back in and kind of blend and kind of fix details. But I just want to get the shade on before the, the base sit, sets. We've got it on. I'm going to go back in. I'm going to play about with it a little bit. Um, and then I'm going to fix the outer corner. So I'll come back to do that. So I'm happy with the lid. Um, so now I'm just going to go in here uh, in the corner. Going in with the black. I'm just going to go right in the outer corner. Working from the outside in. So we're not putting that pink on to where I don't want the pink. Using this angle as well um, gives the kind of the illusion of a wing so you don't have to do a full-on wing liner you still have that shape so between the black and the shimmer I'm just smudging the purpley brown working in teeny teeny tiny motions just to kind of diffuse this line here Still mainly working from the outside in, though I am a little bit less wary now of going back out because we have this purpley brown now as kind of a barrier middleman, if you want. Should we call him Keith? Keith, the middle manager, who is protecting the shimmer from the black and the black from the shimmer. So when I do makeup on clients, I use a gel eyeliner kind of pot with a little angled brush like that, because obviously you can't um, sanitize or felt tip um, between clients. So it's not very hygienic to use um, the felt tip liner. However, on myself, I'm feeling so comfortable with you already that I completely forgot that I was talking and just took a sip of my coffee because coffee is life. On myself, I prefer a felt tip um, just because I, I find them easier to work with. Um, because I've done the black sh kind of shape here, I'm not going to do a massive wing. Wings are notoriously something that a lot of people need to practice, um, me, myself included. I but you know, it does look lovely, but this is a good way of kind of, if you don't want to do a full wing, maybe if you're working on someone else, or if you're just not confident on doing a wing on yourself, if you place that dark eyeshadow into that kind of cat eye shape, you kind of give the illusion of a wing. Because again, I have hooded eyes, um, I go very, very almost on the upper waterline or tight line at the top. Uh, like on the inner, say, third, and then super, super close to the lash line for the next. And then when I do a wing, I only literally do a wing right at the outer corner. Just because if I do a nice thick line, then you don't see any of this work that I've been doing. So super close. Almost on the tight line. So there you go. You can't really, but you can just about see it a bit there. I don't want a massive line liner for this look. I want the eyes, the lid, to kind of be the main focus here. So I'm going to do the other one. Haha. <laughs> and then we're going to do some lashes. There is now a helicopter flying above and my dog is also making an appearance. I do apologize for the noise, but I'm going to do the other eye and then hopefully he will have stopped barking by the time I've done that. Liner is on. Woo! I'm um, gonna do lashes um, before I kind of finish it up anything that needs sorting. So when I do my own lashes, first of all, I'm going to try them on for size. 
I will look down into a mirror and I will pop it on. So what I do is I put the inner corner where I want it to go, like that, and then I just kind of see where I need to cut it. On 9 out of 10 clients I cut the lashes. Um, I always cut lashes on myself. It doesn't mean that you have small eyes or that oh my god you're, you're awkward and you, your eye shape doesn't fit a lash. Very few people have the right kind of size shape eye for a lash to just go on. You can make it work but if you find that your lash is irritating in the outer corner, it may just be that you need to snip off a couple of millimeters at the end. Because I'm using, I've got like black and I've got black eyeliner, I'm using a black eyelash glue. Um, if I do a soft glam or if I've not got black liner on, I, I use a clear glue. So while that's just drying a bit, I'm just going to do the same on the other side. And then once again, I look down into the mirror, I put the lash where I want it to go, and just kind of manipulate it into place. So again, this bit you can do with it with tweezers if you want, or with the lash applicator. But I would say just don't be scared of like getting in there and squeezing and moving about. Don't just place them on and go, well, <laughs> that's it. Uh, and be like afraid to touch them. Uh, squeeze them together with your lash and just kind of play about with them. But I, I do know a lot of people feel like they can't put a lash on because they, they, they're, they're just not confident in doing it. So just don't be scared of it. Um, just, you know, you can poke about with it. Um, you usually have a couple of minutes where the lash is still can uh, the glue is still tacky enough to manipulate. I've chosen this style because again they sweep out, um, so you can still see that nice, gorgeous shimmer, and they kind of just follow that shape that I've created. Um, I'm going to go in with a liner. I could do black. But I think today I'm going to do purple. I do like a bit of a pop of colour on the lash, the waterline. So I'm going in with a purple. So I'm really quite comfortable with poking in my eyes. I can put my fingers in my eyes with no problem. I can take my contacts in and out without, uh, without a mirror uh, and things like that. Obviously, I know not everyone's like that. Uh, when I do this on clients, obviously, we I tell them that it's we're taking it at their speed. If they need to blink, if they need to take a break, obviously, that's what we do. Um, I try and be really quick because <laughs> I know this, uh, quite a lot of people find this horrible. I do think if you can tolerate it, I do think it finishes off the eye really nicely and it can be a really good way of playing with colour. Uh, so say if I had done this quite in quite a neutral look I may have chosen a bright colour uh, on, on the waterline or I tend to go in with a metallic sometimes like a bronze which looks really nice and it's just a way of kind of experimenting a bit without going you know blue eyeshadow on the first the first time you wear makeup. Um, so yeah, be brave, talk to your makeup artist if you're going, uh, if someone else is doing your face or if you're doing your own face, just play about, um, you know, have, have fun with it and try. Um, and again, turning 25, 30, 35, 40, 50, 80, it's not a reason to stop having fun with makeup, uh, it's not a reason to kind of go, well now I can only use neutrals and a tinted moisturiser. Uh, it's for, makeup's for everyone uh, and it just absolutely doesn't stop because you're at, like, at a certain age. It may just be that you benefit from a slightly different technique or different products. Um, I'm going to very quickly just pop a little bit of mascara on. 
Um, any mascara will do. You don't need a fancy one when you're wearing lashes. Just a black mascara. Uh, if you have someone who's not used to wearing lashes, or if you're not used to wearing lashes, putting a bit of mascara on your own lash uh, will help lift the false lash up and they won't feel you won't feel like you're doing this because it can feel even a super light like an eyelash like this which is a half lash can feel really heavy if you're not used to wearing them so just by popping a little bit of mascara on um that will help with that My eyes are more or less done. I'm just going to go in very gently underneath with the same base as I used initially. And then all I'm going to do is that I'm basically going to run the same colours underneath my eyes that I did on top. With a slightly bigger brush, but still quite a small brush because you want to have control over this bit and then finishing off obviously with the fish tan And then literally just to finish off, I'm going in with the lighter of the two highlighter shades on the inner kind of quarter, maybe. My eyes are done. So what I'll do now is I'm going to wipe off any kind of fallout and then we're going to get into doing the base. The place where I probably get the most fine lines is around my eyes and um, so I will just go in with a little bit more of my serum um, just under my eyes uh, but yeah if you have an eye cream ice cream am I hungry if you have an eye cream uh, pop it on underneath your eye uh, area just after you've done your eyes but before you do your skin just give it a bit of extra moisture um, and it'll hopefully save it from uh, getting too cakey or crappy. I may have mentioned I am the queen of mixing. I love mixing stuff to get kind of the result that I want. Um, so I am mixing a couple of primers. I'm mixing a hydrating primer with a glowy primer. And you will see I will turn into C3PO. Uh, with my skin, uh, you may have noticed, you can't really see it as much now when I've got makeup on. I have vitiligo, so my eye area is completely without pigment. Um, so it goes almost like a bluey, you can just about see it's still here. It goes kind of a bluey white. Um, I also have a patch there. I do have some random uh, patches across my face and every now and then I wake up with a new patch. Uh, but apart from that, my skin is all right. Um, it's like what you'd expect for a 37 year old woman. I'm 38 in two weeks, three weeks. So I can't complain really, uh, apart from, I mean, the vitiligo just, I'm not gonna lie, it gets me down as some, sometimes because I do feel, I think I notice it more than other people do, but it's something that I feel quite conscious about. Um, so I do tend to wear makeup when I go out uh, of the house. <laughs> so, primer is on. Yay. We are going to go in with the foundation. So the foundation I use is kind of a medium coverage. It has a skin-like finish. Uh, I like to call it my skin but better. I am actually mixing two shades because I am quite pale at the moment. Um, which is ironic because I've just come back off holiday. Um, but I am very, very fair at the moment. So I'm using, I've just mixed in a lighter shade with my regular ch shade. Um, so this is actually a little bit pale now because I've mixed in the lighter one, which is brilliant. But ah, oh, there we go. Once it starts blending out, it 
goes on quite nicely. How I like personally to match my face. I don't know if it's because I'm so fair um, that I feel if I put a, a darker shade on, I, it, you will see it straight away. Um, so I match my skin tone and then if I want to bronze up, I use my bronzer and two. Maybe, maybe, maybe do it a get a little bit of a deeper tone. Um, and I do the same with clients. I match to their skin tone. I tend to bring about five or six shades of each foundation that I have, uh, unless I know obviously the client, which, in which case I know which shades we use. Um, but I tend to bring five or six uh, of each, uh, well, five or six shades and then mix. Um, and I also find that a more economical way of doing makeup um, rather than buying every shade of foundation there is and some of them you might use twice and then they're out of date and it's just again very wasteful. I couldn't justify going out buying 40 shades of, of a foundation and maybe using 10. Uh, but I have around six shades ranging from the lightest to the deepest and then we mix according to the client's skin um, and that's how I like to work. Concealer is probably where, at least for me, that's where I can have some issues. Um, again with my skin under my eyes it can go quite creppy. I have obviously put that hydrating serum on now but I'm still going to you guessed it, I'm gonna mix uh, a couple of concealers. I'm gonna mix a more full coverage concealer just to get that coverage and then I'm gonna mix a more hydrating concealer which I find will give me the coverage I want but without going too cakey because if I just use the full coverage one it does tend to get a little bit cakey as the day goes on. I have picked up a lot of, I think what Robert Welsh does in terms of concealer, rather than putting it all the way underneath and just literally caking this area in concealer, I don't need it uh, and my skin doesn't like it, it's too much, it's too much coverage for 99% of people. Um, again, if you are older than 18, 19, chances are it will go cakey uh, as the day goes on. So I tend to just put just underneath here where I get kind of darker circles and then just on an angle on the outer corner just to bring that shape up. And then I put a little bit down my nose, I put it on the top of my lip, right in the middle of my chin. And then I tend to do a little bit right here in the middle of the forehead just to do a little bit of highlighting um, without doing it too bright. So this is kind of the shape I go for with me. Um, so not too heavy. And then I just gently blend that in with my brush. I use an, an angled concealer brush and the same uh, with my foundation brush is angled. And I find that I use a lot less product by use, using these. And now my family are coming home, so you may hear some background noise and I will probably pause in about 10 seconds when they actually come into the back garden. They've been out on a bike ride. So we have more or less covered those dark circles. I mean, nothing is going to cover all of it apart from 10 hours of sleep. But again, I still want my skin to look like skin and not like I'm wearing a mask. So I'm not going to cover it up any more than this uh, because I still, even though I want a full glam, I still want it to look a bit more natural. I'm just going to set very lightly under my eyes. I'm going to set around my nose uh, and a little bit under my mouth just because I know that's where I tend to get oily. Um, I won't bake under my eyes because that's going to do my skin absolutely no favours. So I have a loose powder, 
I've just dipped very gently into it and I just do very kind of small circles rather than patting it on. I'm just kind of very, very gently placing my powder super lightly just where I put the concealer. And then the same just around my nose. Just very, very gentle little circles. And underneath my mouth. And I'm just going to do a tiny, tiny bit right there in the middle of my forehead. I'm just going to do a little bit of cream contouring. Uh, I don't use too much contour uh, unless I'm like going fully out out. Um, so I just tend to go from my ear, go down here. I draw it on very roughly and then we blend it out. So don't worry, it looks crazy as always. It's a little bit on my forehead, just a tiny bit there. Um, the bit I do contour is my jaw because I have a very asymmetrical jaw. So, jaw. so this one is nice and sharp. This one is a lot more rounded. So I tend to just bring my contour in a bit on this side and up and just kind of sharpen this line a bit to make it look a little bit more even. And I'm going to blend this. I also like to contour my, contour my nose a little bit. I don't go in too heavy. Uh, I am rather happy with the shape of my nose. I just like to kind of sharpen it up a little bit sometimes. I'm gonna go in with the bronzer. So a trick that I find works really well for both my clients and for myself is that I mix in a little bit of a either gold or bronze um, kind of shim well metallic with my with the bronzer I use. So I use my regular cream bronzer, and then I just add. So I have a more gold one, which is the top top one, and we have a slightly darker bronze one. Uh, obviously for myself. I use the gold one. So I just mix my regular cream bronzer with a little bit of a gold tone. So I mix it on my hand. Um, it's easier to mix it on the hand. So it's mixed in already. And then kind of start applying it to my face. And once I apply it, I tend to like to blend it in with like a, a clean brush as well. Uh, so I apply it with one brush and then go back in and blend properly. Because sometimes if you apply it with one brush and then try and blend it with the same brush, you're just kind of adding, constantly adding more product. I just think it adds just that little bit of dimension uh, with adding a metallic or a shimmer. So it's not glittery, but it just, it's not completely matte either. Uh, and I actually do the same for my blush. Um, so I mix my usual liquid blush with a tiny bit of a metallic, a pink and a metallic, more of a champagne. Because I like a peachy blush rather than too pinky a blush. I think with more mature skin, um, cream products and more of a glowy, natural skin like finish rather than all matte powdered down um finish works usually better it's kind of if you do get a bit of fine lines it tends to work better um with you know if you have dry skin obviously it's going to work a bit better than powdering it down and it's going to sit in lines and things like that uh, i just find that more of a natural slash glowy finish just works on kind of mature 
mature skin. I hate that we call it mature skin. Um, like, like we're a special group as soon as we're not a teenager. Um, maybe I should say grown up skin, but then <laughs> again, it sounds it sounds really creepy. But you know what I mean. Skin that has lived, that has seen some shit. That that kind of skin is what I'm talking about. Maybe had some children. Maybe had children like mine who make them age kind of 10 years every day. Um, yeah, they are the kind of people that I'm talking about. And they are my main kind of client group. I'm going to add a teeny bit of a liquid highlighter um, because I find, again, the liquid highlighters don't add as much texture as a powder highlighter does. But today we want to be hoey and glowy. I'm going to spray some setting spray. And because of the look I've gone for, I'm also going to add just a tiny bit of a glowy spray. So I usually do this. I, I set it with a, a setting spray that's going to make it last. And then I tend to add a glowy spray if, if this is the kind of look I've done. So in terms of brows, um, I laminate my brows every four to six weeks-ish. Uh, I, I do it myself. Um, and I have just tinted them as well. I have naturally dark eyebrows. Um, I actually tint them just in the same shade as my eyebrows are naturally. I just tint them to even them out, not to make them darker. So what I'm going to do just today is literally just popping some uh, brow gel slash balm on and brushing them into place because I really don't need anything else. Um, in terms of brows on clients, I tend to use just a fine pencil um, to fill in gaps, um, add a bit of shape and then just set it, set it in place with, again, a clear brow balm slash gel. Um, unless they specifically ask for something, like if they ask for a heavy brow, so I'll, where I'll use a pomade, um, or they may ask for a very light brow, in which case I will just use a gel. So that is literally all I'm going to do today because mine are just done. So because I'm doing my own makeup, I will do a nude lip because that's all I ever wear. Um, I love the look of coloured lipsticks, I love the look of dark lipsticks. I can't wear them myself, um, I feel like I'm in fancy dress. So we're going to do a nude. Um, if I was doing a makeup on someone else, I might do a nice dark pink or a nice bright pink with this, obviously depending on what they like. So I've just, I'm not really overlining them, I've just kind of followed my natural shape. Again, it depends on what, what you want, uh, what clients want. Um, if they want a kind of bigger lip or if they want to just the their own natural lip. And then add a bit of lipstick. And I'm just going to put a gloss on top because top, I think this is too warm toned. So the very last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to finish off the very inner corner of my eye with pretty much a bright white. Uh, it's like, it's like liquid diamonds. It just is stunning. And I will put the same just underneath the brow here. So here we go. This is the finished look. Um, I've obviously just left my hair down. Um, we'll talk about we'll talk about this in a, at a different time. But yeah, this is a full glam on thirty plus skin. I'm quite happy with it. Uh, I think it looks amazing. I think obviously the highlighters slash eye toppers kind of speak for themselves. 
um, it's hard to go wrong with this kind of look. Um, thank you very much for watching. Um, if you have any questions, if you have any suggestions what you'd like to see, uh, please let me know in the comments. Um, I am more than happy to talk about a little bit about myself. Uh, um, yeah, let me know what you'd like to see. Um, and I hope to see you again. Thank you for watching.